Hey gamers and YouTubers, uh, once again, it's Jiren giving you all the 2.0. <laughs> you guys know me for the gaming and my, and my reciting and memory skills. And sorry for the long wait, but I am finally ready for reciting to you all of Suggestive Gaming's part two of the Grand Theft Auto video game storyline. I will mention some things that they might have missed, that they might have missed or might have missed or gotten wrong. But eh, whatever. I'm just like I just like to do all this stuff for fun and to show you guys my skill. Really think I could be good for acting as well as for as well as for narration or whatever. Anyways, uh, let's get started and hopefully there'll be no interruptions. <clears throat> Last month, we here at Suggestive Gaming took a look at the notorious Grand Theft Auto 3D Universe's timeline. Today, we're going to take a look at both the HD Universe containing all of the games, all of the games, including Grand Theft Auto 4, as well as the 2D Universe containing all of the games released before GTA 3. So strap yourselves in because we have a lot to cover. Note that we will not be covering Grand Theft Auto Online, the multiplayer online expansion to GTA 5, due to ambiguous placement from the timeline stemming from its ever-evolving nature. We might cover its story in a standalone video in the future once Rockstar is done with it. Now before we begin, we do ask that if you're enjoying our timeline video please consider supporting us on Patreon. Suggestive Gaming is only a team of two people, and we buy and play through every single game we cover on our What You Need to Know series. If you chip in, you get to watch our videos early, listen to exclusive podcasts, and even directly control what games and media we cover in the series, among other perks. Nah, I guess it's better. Camera's better like this. Sorry. Now, with all that out of the way, this is what you'll need to know about the Grand Theft Auto games, part two. Our story briefly begins the prologue of Grand Theft Auto V in 2004 in the Midwest city of Rundorf, North Yankton. There are three men named Michael Townley, Trevor Phillips, and Brad Snyder who are robbing a Bobcat security money storage facility. Michael and Trevor blow up in the vault and steal the cash. And as they escape, the trio are flocked by local law enforcement. They're able to reach their getaway driver's vehicle, but he is shot dead by pursuing police. Michael is able to take the wheel and drives the three towards a helipad parked for their escape. However, after nearly avoiding a police roadblock, Michael is forced to cross a train track, nearly missing an oncoming train which hits the car and knocking them into a nearby tree. The three make their way through an abandoned town where FIB agent Dave Norton is waiting for them and he shoots Brad, killing him. Norton then shoots at Michael, who falls to the ground. After a short battle with the police, Trevor is convinced by Michael to abandon them to save himself. He then escapes into the fields with police still in tow. Later at a nearby cemetery, a funeral is held for Michael with Agent Norton in attendance. However, Michael watches the funeral from the distance, learning that... Uh, 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 I gotta quit speaking so fast. Feels like I might say something that you guys won't understand. However, from the distance, Michael watches the funeral himself, having struck a deal with Norton to fake his death to kickstart his career in exchange for government protection for Michael and his family. Four years later, in 2008, we meet former Yugoslav army soldier and human trafficker Nico Bellic in Grand Theft Auto IV, who's coming to America by sea on a ship called the Saint Platypus, or the SS Platypus, I Hard for me to recall for now after seeing some videos of the GTA 4 playthrough. Okay, back to it. Who's coming to America by sea, yeah? Seeking a better wife, escape from his former employer, and looking for a fellow soldier who double-crossed his squad a decade or ten years ago, Nico meets with his cousin Roman in Liberty City, his only family in America. After arriving, Nico finds that his cousin had been over... Ugh. After arriving in Liberty City, Nico finds that his cousin had been over overselling his lavish lifestyle that he'd gotten from letters from him. Regardless, he begins to work with Roman for his taxi business, eventually meeting Roman's girlfriend Mallory, 
who introduces Nico to a girl named Michelle, who he begins to date. While working for Roman, Nico begins to make contacts within the Liberty City Organized Crime Syndicate. First, he begins working for Little Jacob, the head of the Jamaican Mafia, who he establishes a friendship with. Shortly after, he begins working for a man named Vladimir Glebov, a mafioso under Russian mob boss Mikhail Faustin, who tasks Nico with killing an associate of his named Ivan. At this point in the game, Nico can choose to either kill or spare Ivan. Either way, shortly after, Vlad reveals that he had been sleeping with Roman's girlfriend, Mallory, which angers Nico, causing him to kill Vlad. Meanwhile, Billy Gray, president of the Lost Motorcycle Club, escapes from we is released from rehab and rejoins his brotherhood. The Lost Vice President, Johnny Klebitz, has established a truce with the gang's rivals, the Angels of Death, by giving them Billy's motorcycle as a peace offering after his arrest. Billy orders Johnny and the Lost to steal his bike back, killing members of the Angels in the process, ending their truce and igniting a war. Elsewhere, Nico has started taking jobs from Faustin, usually involve killing one of Faustin's many rivals. One of these targets is Faustin's daughter's boyfriend, Jason Michaels, a recently patched in member of the Lost. Billy convinces Johnny and the others that the Angels were behind Jason's death, causing the Lost to storm the Angels' clubhouse, kill all the members there, and steal the heroin they were holding inside. Under the orders of Faustin, Nico kills Lenny Petrovic, the son of Kenny Petrovic, Liberty City's most powerful Russian mobster. Another Russian, Dmitry Raskolov, warns Nico that Petrovic will do everything in his power to kill him unless he kills Faustin to avenge his son's death. Dmitry then sweetens the pot with a cash award, and Nico complies by finding and killing Faustin. However, when Nico goes to the meetup spot to get his reward from Dimitri, Dimitri betrays him and hands him over to Ray Bulgarin, Nico's former employer in human trafficking who Nico escaped from after a failed assignment that lost Ray a fair amount. Nico is able to escape the ambush with help from mortal Jacob, but Dimitri and Ray pursue Nico, burning down Roman's apartment and taxi business, forcing the cousins to move to the Bohan borough and begin working for drug dealer Elisabetta Torres. <sighs> One moment, just gotta catch my breath. Sometimes doing this a lot can put a toll. But hey, at least my voice is still good and I never I never had to take a tonsillectomy. <laughs> Elizabeth introduces Nico to Johnny, who's trying to sell the heroin stolen from the Angels of Death. Having finding some buyers for the heroin, Elizabeth sends Johnny, Nico, and a crack dealer named Playboy X to a rundown apartment complex to perform the deal. However, Johnny notices odd behavior from one of the buyers and tries to call it off. The buyer then pulls a gun and reveals himself to be an undercover Liberty City police officer from the LCPD. The three are able to escape the sting, and Johnny takes the drugs back to the Lost. Through as a beta, Nico meets Packy McCreary, and, and the two, only McCreary's men, his brother Derek and a man named Michael, robbed the Bank of Liberty. However, during the robbery, one hostage, Eugene Reaper, confers with another hostage, Louise Lopez, to attack the robbers and foil their plan. Despite Louise telling them that's a bad idea, Eugene pulls a concealed gun and shoots Michael, forcing Packy to shoot and kill Eugene. Nico then leaves the vault and he, Packy, and Derek leave with over a million dollars. No, no, wait, wait, not Derek, it's a, the brother was Gerald, Gerald McCreary, not G yeah, Pack. Yeah, off topic. Uh, pa off topic, but still topic in the game. Packy he has like uh, three brothers, right? Two brothers, Derek and Gerald. Oh yeah, a third one who works for the Liberty City Police. Uh, too bad I can't place his name. Anyways, uh, back to the story. Uh, Meanwhile, Billy arranges a deal with the Triads, who are the original owners of the heroin stolen by the Angels, to set up and take care of Johnny, whom he deems disloyal. Another lost brother, Jim Fitzgerald, learns of the heroin's original owner, and Billy arranges a new deal to sell it back to them, sending Jim and Johnny to meet with the Triads. Ironically, when Billy was doing the deal with the Triads, Luis Lopez and his boss, a 
A club owner named Tony Prince, also known as Gay Tony, was there to conduct a deal. However, it went down and a shootout began and the two were able to escape. Anyways, again, back to the main, back to the main thing. The triads ambushed them. The triads ambushed Johnny and Jim, but the two were able to escape, finding Billy being surrounded by police outside. Billy wildly accuses Johnny of setting him up in order to take over as president. This causes the lost motorcycle gang to split into two fractured groups, one led by Johnny and another led by a man named Brian Jeremy, who remains loyal to Billy. A civil war erupts between the two, leaving Johnny to track down and kill Brian. Later, Johnny is forced to rescue his ex-girlfriend, Ashley Butler, from a group of drug addicts. And Ashley explains that she owes money to Dimitri. Dimitri's men then order Johnny to kidnap Roman Bellic in exchange for them sparing Ashley's life. Johnny is able to capture Roman and delivers him to an abandoned factory. Nico is informed of the kidnapping by Mallory and he makes his way to the factory. After a shootout with the Russian Mafia, he's able to save Roman, furthering the rivalry between himself and Dimitri. Later, Nico is called by Playboy X and he asks Nico to kill his former business partner and friend Dwayne Forge, who Nico had been helping to rebuild his life after jail. After leaving... Dwayne calls Nico and asks Nico the same, to kill Playboy X. Depending on where the player's allegiances lie at this point, Nico can choose whichever man to kill, either Playboy X or Dwayne. Elsewhere, Johnny meets Ray Bacino, an Italian mobster through Ashley, who Nico meets through Packy. Ray informs Johnny at the deal at the docks in which nightclub owner Tony Prince, a.k.a. Gay Tony, as well as his bodyguard Luis Lopez and, and Tony's boyfriend Evan Moss, will be buying $2 million worth in diamonds that were stolen from Nico's former employer, Ray Bulgarin. Johnny and the Lost ambushed the deal, killing Evan and getting the diamonds. Louise is able to save Tony, and he decides to turn his life around, first by quitting drugs and paying back his debt to Moy Kibitz, whose brother Brucey is a friend and business partner to Nico and Roman. Louise is able to work for Maury and eventually pay off the debt. Tony's sobriety is short-lived, however, as he has gotten back on drugs by his close friend Gracie, daughter of mob boss Giovanni and Sawadi. Coincidentally, Nico is tasked by Packy to kidnap Gracie, whom they hold for ransom. <sighs> Later, Johnny hides the diamonds in garbage bags, which are later collected by Nico until a buyer is found. Eventually, Bacino strikes a deal with the Jewish mob to exchange the diamonds for cash at the Libertonian Museum, sending Johnny and Nico to perform the deal. Tony learns about the deal and he sends Louise to ambush it, hoping to exchange the diamonds in return for... for and, and hoping to exchange the diamonds for Gracie's safe return. Excuse me, just had breakfast. At the deal, Louise guns down one of the Jewish mobsters and takes the diamonds back. Johnny, meanwhile, grabs the money and runs, planning to keep it for the lost. Nico escapes, but empty-handed. Bacino becomes enraged at Johnny's betrayal and kidnaps him and Jim. Him, but the two were able to escape. However, Johnny learns from Ashley that Jim was killed by Nico under Ray's command. Johnny plans to attack Ray as revenge, but he learns from from uh, someone that he worked for that Billy plans to testify against the Wasp as part of a plea deal. Johnny and the remaining members of the Wasp storm the storm the prison, getting inside and finding Billy. Afterwards, Johnny kills Billy and returns to the clubhouse, burning it down to close this chapter of the Wasp Motorcycle Club to start anew somewhere else. Now back to the diet. That ends the DLC story with Johnny Clevitz in GTA 4, but there's still two more to finish. Now back to the Diamonds, Louise receives a phone call from Ray Bulgarin, and he's led up to a rooftop with a box. Inside the box, Louise finds the head of the cook that stole the Diamonds from Ray, claiming to Louise that the Diamonds originally belonged to him. Afterwards, Ray's men ambush Louise, but he's able to escape. Later, Nico... Later, Nico finds... 
Nico is able to find the two men who he suspects betrayed his squad 10 years or a decade ago, Florian Kravich and Darko Brevik. Florian informs him that it was Darko who sought out the squad to feed his heroin addiction. However, during a job for Elizabeth, Nico and little Jacob learn that Nico's girlfriend, Michelle, is actually an undercover internal affairs agent named Karen Daniels. After, working, after helping work for their front company, United Liberty Paper, Karen helps Nico find Darko, whom he can once again kill or spare. Giovanni and Sawadi orders Louise and Tony to exchange the diamonds for Gracie's kidnappers, but during the commotion, Ray Bulgarian shows up with his men who attack Nico and Packy. During the commotion, Ray is able to escape, and Tony, Louise, and Gracie leave in a speedboat. Louise and Pack, uh, I mean, Nico and Packy find the diamonds at one of Ray's men, who throws them into a nearby dump truck, losing them once again, knowing that if he gives up the diamonds or hands them over to Ray, he'll die either way, but he dies anyway. Later, Nico is called by mob boss Jimmy Pegorino, and he asks him to conduct a heroin deal with Dimitri, which Nico will pay $250,000 to do. Nico is reluctant to do so, however, due to his animosity with Dimitri. Yeah. Coinc Coincidentally, Jimmy Pegorino is the one who tasks Nico to kill Ray Bacino, so that takes care of Johnny's revenge, more or less. Okay, moving on. During... Moving on, after meeting with Jimmy, one of two endings can transpire based on Nico's decision. If Nico decides to take the, d the heroin deal, he and another man named Bell drive to the meetup place but discovers that Rascal Off has killed the people that they were supposed to meet with. Johnny, I mean, ugh, speaking too fast again. Nico and Bell fight their way out of the meetup point and escape with the money. It and Nico vows to kill Dimitri later, but uses the cash to leave the crime business. Later, Roman is preparing to marry Mallory, and at the wedding, one of Dimitri's men arrives to assassinate Nico. Nico is able to thwart the attempt, but the gunman is able to fire a shot, which hits Roman, killing him. Nico then kills the hitman and sets up with Jacob to find Dimitri. Nico then witnesses Dimitri kill Pegorino before a chase ensues. Nico then corners Dimitri at Happiness Island and kills him under the Statue of Happiness. Later, Nico gets a call from Mallory informing him that she is pregnant with Roman's child, whom Nico vows to take care of, ending his path of the story, of the main game story. In the alternate ending, if Nico chooses not to do the deal and instead go after Dimitri immediately, he finds him at the docks and loading the heroin on the same boat that he used to get to Liberty City, the... The Saint Platypus or SS Platypus. <sighs> Nico finds his way into the cargo hold, then kills Dimitri. Then he leaves the ship to inform Roman. On the day of Roman's wedding, Nico arrives with Kate McCreary, Packy's only sister, and his dates. Afterwards, Pegorino, angry at Nico's betrayal, drives past, shooting at the crowd outside the chapel, hitting Kate and killing her. Following this, Nico, Jacob, and Roman set off to find Jimmy. Following the same chase, but this time with Jimmy, Nico ends up at Happiness Island and kills Pegorino. Once again, Nico is informed that Mallory is pregnant, and Roman vows that if the baby is a girl, they will name her in Kate's memory. The, the song... Either way, depending on which ending you guys choose in the main story of Grand Theft Auto 4, by you all, I mean the player is Nico. Elsewhere, Louise learns that Tony's, that Tony's clubs are all closed after he, forgets, after he forgets to pay his debts due to the other events at hand. Louise is summoned by debt collector Rocco Pelosi, uh, who informs him that Giovanni and Sawani has made a truce at Rebel Garen and blames Louise and Tony for their mishaps with the diamonds. Rocco offers to spare Louise and his family and friends as long as he personally kills Tony. Later at one of Tony's clubs, Rocco and his uncle Vince arrives, and they throw a gun to Louise. While Louise points his gun at Tony and apologizing for his action, for this action, he changes his target quickly and shoots Vince in the head. T Louise then plans to kill Rocco, but Tony stops him, claiming that Pelosi is a made man. 
Rocco then leaves Liberty City and the t and Louise and Tony survive another, another attack by Ray's henchmen. Afterwards, Louise and Tony work together to stop one of Ray's heroin deals. Afterwards, Louise learns from Ray's henchmen that he will be leaving in the city by plane shortly. Louise then rushes to the airport and jumps on Ray's personal plane while it lifts off. He then kills two of Ray's henchmen and finally confronts the man. Bulgarian pulls out a grenade, warning Louise that if he shoots him, the grenade will detonate, killing them both. Louise takes the risk and shoots Ray, killing him. He then pierce he then jumps out of the plane before it explodes, parachuting back to the city below. Elsewhere, Louise meets Tony at a park, where the two decide to continue running the club together. However, before, again, before meeting up with Tony, <coughs> bless me. Okay, last time. However, before meeting up with Tony, Louise bumps into a homeless man named Jerry Kapowitz, who falls into a pile of trash. Louise helps Jerry up, and when he leaves, Jerry notices the diamonds laying amongst the trash. He takes them and runs off, planning to use the money to move the Vice City to open a gun and liquor shop. And that ends the entire story of GTA 4. The main story is Nico and the DLCs as Johnny and Louise. And now we jump into a new game, Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars for the Nintendo DS. One year later, in 2009, we meet Huang Li, the son of a triad boss who was recently murdered. Huang is tasked to fly the Liberty City to deliver a sword named Yu Jian. Won by his father in a poker game to the new patriarch of the family, Huang's uncle Wu, also known as Kenny. After touching down at the airport, however, Huang is ambushed and shot. Believing him to be dead, the assailants take the sword and dump Huang's body in the water. Huang then wakes up and rushes to inform Kenny that the sword had been stolen. This frustrates Kenny, who planned to offer up the sword to Xin Yao Ming, the triad boss in Liberty City, in order to take his place as a successor. Huang then works for other triad members to help keep Kenny's business running, as well as working towards finding the sword. However, after a deal gone wrong, Huang is confronted by Wade Heston, a crooked undercover detective of the Liberty City Police Department. And Heston offers to help Huang find the sword as long as he can get a good bust to help boost his feeling reputation. After working for a Korean gang, Heston plants a bug and learns that a splinter group called the Wonson Nudon's leader is a police informant who is responsible for the sword's theft. The triads threaten to kill Huang, believing him to be the informant, but Kenny arrives and convinces Sin to give them time to find the real rat. After working for the Angels of Death motorcycle gang, the Korean mob, plus the Mafia, Huang gets no closer to finding the identity of the informants. He then looks at Heston to hack into the FIB servers, which reveal two names, Triad member Zhao Ming and Sin Yao Ming's son, Chan. Feeling disgraced that his son might have betrayed the Triads, Sin Yao Ming steps down as their leader, appointing Kenny in his place. Huang then sets off and kills both suspected informants, despite them claiming their innocence until their final breaths. Afterwards, Heston meets up with Huang and tells him that the data that they that the data that they got from the FIB was actually incorrect, and he learns about a meeting involving the leader of the Wan Su plus the real informants. <sighs> When they get to the meeting, Huang is shocked to find that the man was uh, the leader of the Wan Su and the man responsible for his father's death and theft of the sword was none other than his uncle Kenny. After a chase ensues, Heston and Huang corner Kenny at Sin's residence. And Sin Yao Ming explains that he offers Kenny a deal that to to retrieve the sword, offering his position as leader of the triads in return. Knowing that he had to kill, knowing that he would have to kill his own brother to get the sword, can he set up an elaborate plan to do so and subsequently blame the theft on the two other triad members? Kenny finally gives Sin Yao Ming the sword, but he does so by stabbing him with it. Huang then engages his uncle in battle and eventually 
and eventually emerges victorious, successfully avenging his father's death. Afterwards, the FIB and internal affairs show up to arrest Huang and Heston, but Heston reveals that he had been deep undercover the whole time, and the bust is his. Xin Yaoming impresses Huang's loyalty and trusts him with being the leader of the Triads before he is arrested. Heston then, Heston then orders the authorities to Heston then then tells the, the FIB to arrest everyone in the building except for Huang, whom he refers to as a good kid. That ends GTA Chinatown Wars, and now we jump to GTA 5 with the main story. For... Four years later, in 2013, we meet Franklin Clinton, living in the San Andreas city of Los Santos. Franklin and his friend Lamar Davis work for Simeon Yatarian as repossession agents who take cars back after their owners default on their payments. Eventually, Franklin is tasked with retrieving a car sold to Jimmy DeSanta. He sneaks into the DeSantis' home and steals the car back, but on his way back to the dealership, he's held at gunpoint by Jimmy's dad, Michael Townley, now going by the name DeSanta after being relocated by Agent Norton. Michael forces Franklin to drive the car into a, into the dealership showroom, and afterwards, the two become fr the two become friendly after they bond over their criminal dealings. Eventually, Michael finds out that his wife is having an affair with her tennis coach. Enraged, he and Franklin chase him up to a house in the hills. hills. Michael then tear again enraged. Michael destroys one of the house one of the house's support pillars, destroying it. Eventually, the two find out that the house was far too extravagant to belong to a tennis coach, and the true owner, Mexican drug lord Martin Madrazo, arrives at Michael's house to demand restitution. In order to raise the money needed, in order to raise the money needed to repay Martin, Michael returns to his old criminal ways, enlisting Franklin and his old friend and accomplished hacker Lester Crest. But through the hatch a plan and assemble a team to rob a jewelry store. Meanwhile, Trevor is still alive, now living in Blaine County, Sandy Shores, where he sees a news report about the nearby robbery. After being convinced that it was Michael's handiwork, Trevor comes to the conclusion that he must still be alive. Shortly after, Johnny Clebitz arrives and confronts Trevor for sleeping with Ashley, whom he reunited with and took to San Andreas before they both went back to using drugs. After Johnny pushes him over the edge, Trevor throws him to the ground and stomps on his head, killing him. Knowing that the tryouts would go after him for... Ah. No, no, no. Why did I say... Ugh. Knowing that the lost motorcycle gang will go after him for their leader's death, Trevor decides to take them out anyway and take over their meth business. He and his partner, Ron Jakowski, take care of this, while another man, Wade Habert, is sent to find Michael. Trevor then decides to start a partnership with the Triads. There we go. But they instead go with his rivals, the O'Neill brothers. This enrages Trevor, who kills most of the O'Neills and destroys their house, ending their business. Afterwards, Trevor gets word back from Wade, and they head down to Los Santos to confront Michael. <sighs> Michael becomes worried for his family's safety when Trevor finds him, but the two quickly decide to work together to stop Michael's daughter, Tracy, from appearing on an embarrassing reality show. Oh yeah, Michael's wife is named Amanda. I forgot to mention that, my bad. Setting aside the differences, Michael and Trevor work together with Franklin to commit various robberies for financial gain. Eventually doing especially doing tasks for FIB agents Dave Norton, Steve Haynes, and Andrea Sanchez to prevent their arrests. The FIB's main motivation is to undermine internal affairs, including Nico's former girlfriend, Karen Daniels. While working for the FIB, Michael, Franklin, and Trevor also work for a billionaire named Devin Weston. Eventually, through Devin, Michael, and also through Devin, Michael also works at a movie studio alongside his idol, Solomon Richards. All the while, the three main players' individual wives begin to spiral out of control. Michael's homicidal tendencies cause his family to leave him. Franklin is forced to rescue. Rescue Lamar from the Ballers, the same gang from GTA San Andreas. 
and Trevor falls in love with and kidnaps Martin Madronso's wife, Patricia. Eventually, Trevor is able to piece together the truth of what happened in North Yankton in 2004, and he flies back there with Michael in pursuit to dig up Michael's grave, finding Brad's body in his place. Trevor, having believing Brad was still alive by the FIB, leaves Michael to be captured by the Triads, who track down Trevor. Franklin is able to rescue Michael, and the two are then tasked by Agent Haynes to infiltrate the FIB building and delete any incriminating evidence that they held on them. They do so and delete information held on the trio as well. During the debriefing with Michael, however, chaos ensues as Sanchez is revealed to be working for a rival agency led by United Liberty Paper. Haynes kills Sanchez and Michael nearly escapes from the attacks of the FIB, the IAA, and Merriweather through the help of Trevor, who claims that if anyone's going to kill Michael, it's going to be him. The three, along with Lester, plan one last score, robbing the Union Depository. They succeed in robbing over $2 million worth of gold before splitting ways for good. Oh, wait, wait. $200 million worth of gold, my bad. He's always like, it feels like my memory is starting to degrade now. $200 million worth of gold before splitting ways for good. However, shortly after, Haynes and Norton approach Franklin, telling him to kill Trevor, as well as Devin Weston, who wants him to kill Michael, in retaliation over the course of the events for double-crossing him over the course of the events prior. This leads Franklin with three choices to end the main game. Kill Trevor, kill Michael, or save them both in an apparent suicide mission. If Franklin chooses to... If Franklin chooses to kill Trevor, he and Michael give chase and Michael and Michael crashes his truck into an oil tank, which Franklin ignites, burning him to death. Franklin then ceases contact with Michael and returns to his former wife. If Franklin chooses to kill Michael, a chase ensues where the two eventually end up on top of a water tower. Although Michael pleads at Fr Although Michael pleads at Franklin claiming he was like a son to him, he eventually falls off the tower to his death. Franklin then leaves to return to his former wife. If Franklin chooses the third ending, he saves both Michael and Trevor, and the three put aside any differences and work together along with Lester, splitting up to take out their various adversaries. Also with help from Lamar. Michael kills Franklin's rival gang member Stretch, Franklin kills Triad boss Wei Chang, and Trevor kills Steve Haynes, later heading to Devin Weston's house. There he kidnaps Weston and puts him in the trunk of his car. He then drives to a meetup location where Franklin and Michael join him. Michael, Trevor, and Franklin then push the car off the cliff and it falls into, a, falls into the water, exploding, killing their final rival together. Michael and Trevor then settle their differences, and the two, along with Franklin, agree to stay as friends, but decide to stop working together. As the three then leave, we see the ending of the Grand Theft Auto HD storyline. At least for now, at least for now, but we all know Grand Theft Auto 6 is coming next year, so there's a continuation to the HD storyline, and wondering if they might bring some characters back in it too. <sighs> Now, while we are done covering the 3D universe and the HD universe, you're probably wondering about some of the older GTA games. Due to their nature, we don't have much to go over, but for, but for completion's sake, let's take a look anyway. Let's take a look back, way back, to the Grand Theft Auto 2D universe, which is for PC. Starting in London in 1961, we meet a criminal working for the London mob in Grand Theft Auto London. The player then works with Harold Cartwright to wipe out rival gangs to build up their own gang's reputation. Eight, eight years later, Cartwright's gang is still going strong, despite incidents with secret agents and international terrorists. Eventually, the player is tasked with killing Cartwright for the firm. For the firm. The firm then leads the player to the Crisp Twins, London's biggest kingpins whom the player kills to take over the entire London crime syndicate. Oh! Nearly 30 years later, in 1990... 
1997 in the first Grand Theft Auto game for PC. Oh, we meet a new criminal in Liberty City working for Bubby Seragliano. After several jobs, Bubby claims that there's too much heat on the player and sends them to San Andreas, leaving Liberty City. There, the player works for Uncle Fu to help build up his crime family. There, the player works for El Burro before leaving, before leaving San Andreas and heading for Vice City. There, the player works for a police officer named Samuel Deaver, whom he works for before meeting Brother Marcus, whom again, the player works for and pleases. Things get a little hard to cover when it comes to GTA 2. In either 1999 or 2013, depending on who you believe, we meet a criminal named Claude Speed in Anywhere City, who I believe is Claude from Grand Theft Auto 3 and also Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. There, Claude Speed takes on jobs from various gangs to build up his reputation in Anywhere City. After that, we've covered every... And with that, we covered every Grand Theft Auto video game besides online, which hopefully we'll get to in the future. If you enjoyed this trip through GTA, then you better subscribe to Suggestive Gaming, follow us on Twitch, and leave a comment letting us know what other game series you'd like for us to cover next. Huge thanks to our current patrons, Steven Castaneda, William Mathers, and some grass clippings. <laughs> well, that's it. That's was me going through with Suggestive Gaming's coverage of the Grand Theft Auto video games, part two. Along with me adding some things that were, that were left out or that might have gotten wrong. But again, it's like, doing, it's like to do this for fun. And hopefully if the right person sees it, see, sees this, hope, hopefully I might make a quick, I'd make a quick buck as well. Anyways, uh, that should be the end of my take. I'll, I'll be sure to hit you up with another reciting or narration vid. <clears throat> Excuse me, sooner or later. So, please leave a like, a comment, sh share, and uh, also pound the subscribe button as well. And I will see you all in my next gaming or recitation video or shorts. This is Jiren, J Y R A N. And I just gave you the 2.0. Have a righteous day or night. Stay safe out there. And for the last time, like, leave a comment, share, and pound the subscribe button. Keep on gaming. And I will see you all later. Deuces. Yeah.